Hello, welcome to BioGrid TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Hamani Diori During the French colonial administration, the man Hamani Diori became a member of this world. Born on the 6th of June 1916 in Sudori town, a distance from Niamey, the capital of Niger Republic. His father happened to be a public health practitioner in the rural village Yeni in Boboye region, the western part of Niger. For cultural reasons, as Nigerians were majorly nomads, Hamani without doubt also had a nomadic schooling, started his primary school in Boboye region, eventually finished his primary school in Doso region, a move orchestrated by his mother after the sudden death of her husband father of Hamani Diori. Since movement is a Nigerian way of life, Hamani started secondary school in Niamey, later left for Dakar, Senegal at the École Normale Supérieure William Ponty Teachers Training College on Gori Island where it is said to be a school known for the training of most African scholars and leaders. In 1935, he had his first career relationship in teaching. He taught at the regional school in Niamey. His unending thirst for knowledge made him forge on to study English language at the regional school of Maradi, where he also taught for a year from 1937 to 1938, before he was sent to France to have a research in ethnography and linguistics. While in France, he taught Hausa and Songezama languages to colonial administrators for about a year, returned to Niger in 1940 and continued his career relationship in teaching. But hey, he found true love in Aisha Diori who later went on to become the first lady of Niger Republic in 1960. She was known to be outspoken with a large heart. She supported her husband to raise a good nation. She saw into black school pupils who were victims of racial discrimination. Even if education wasn't fair on her background, she painstakingly made the education of nomadic children in the country possible. But many accusations on corrupt practices and the stigma of greed attached to her should live her life. She is survived by six children. A delve into the interesting but challenging aspect of Hamani Diori's political journey, who began his political career in 1945 when the French colonial empire was in disorder towards the end of World War II, paving way for the ready-made plan to restructure each colony, leading to the creation of the French Union where the colonial territories were allowed to elect a representative. So doing, Hamani smartly used his opportunity to fight for the right of the people, especially those who fought during the war and also picked education as an instrument of knowledge to voice against the colonial masters. Soon, after his disagreement with the colonial administration, coupled with the fame he just got, hurriedly dipped his feet into the political sea, reaching for a representative seat of Niger territory and Western Sudan, but wouldn't win against an established Fili Dabo Sisokwa who had a strong political stratagem in place. Worthy to note, later the same year, Hamani who never gave in to defeat threw in his card again to contest but this time he was smart enough to seek the support of a political bigwig godfather, Hamabubu with the backing of Rasembumo Democratique Africain RDA, the party he belonged to. This convincingly won him the seat of deputy representative of Niger at the African Democratic Assembly. Hamani's wing turned gold when he clinched the title as the first democratic elected president of Niger Republic on the 3rd of August 1960 the same year the country gained her independence. He immediately swung into action, 
some way going to fulfill his late father's silent dream in the health sector. Hamani Diori gave primary attention to the health system, also showing much concern on the educational system of the country, which is said to be the bedrock of the governmental systems in place today. Hamani would always be regarded as a patriotic leader who puts the state of Nigeria ahead of other assignments. He strongly believed in the active participation of the people, especially the participation of the youth in the economic strength of the country. He later went on to establish a single party system under the Progressive Party of Niger PPN. He tightened his fist against poverty and illiteracy by establishing and licensing organizations, companies that majored in food storage programs like the Niger Food Storage Program, which admittedly couldn't alleviate the famine that later occurred in the country. Notably, Hamani steered the wheel, being the president of the Republic of Niger and president of the Progressive Party of Niger since it was the only constituted party. He single-handedly headed some ministerial offices, notable ones, between 1960 and 1963, served as the Minister of Defense and Foreign Minister. Being the man of the moment, he retained himself as the only candidate for the President of the Republic, got re-elected on a post in 1965 and 1970 with no chill. He once again reserved the Foreign Ministry office from 1965 to 1967. Hamani Diori's administration began to nosedive when the nation started to experience economic droughts. He unfortunately couldn't give the plague needed attention, instead focused more on foreign relations, addressing mostly international issues, neglecting the pressing needs of the populace a situation critics stagged misplaced priority. He was heavily criticized for his nonchalant attitude which led to the 1974 coup of Niger Republic. Hamani got stabbed in the back in a military coup on the 15th of April 1974 by his chief of staff, Colonel Seimi Kunche, the man who swiftly suspended the constitution, dissolved the parliament and suppressed any political party in Niger. Hence, matter got worse when Hamani Diori was accused of corruption, political instability, injustice, and especially nepotism. He was ousted from office and imprisoned in Zinda, eastern part of Niger, where he spent six years between 1974 and 1980. After his release, he was then placed under house arrest until when President Seimi Kunche died on the 10th of November 1987. Finally, he gained freedom and left for Morocco where he lived peacefully for two years before his demise, aged 72. He died on the 23rd of April 1989. What have we missed out of this biography of Diori? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.